This is Greg Gimeno, attorney with Chesapeake Wills and Trust and author of the book, How to Protect Your Home and Life Savings in Maryland. Let's talk about three things that a will does. Number one, a will names who is going to handle your affairs after your death. In Maryland, we call that person the personal representative. In other states, it may be called the executor. The personal representative is the person who takes your will to the courthouse and opens your estate. Once the estate is opened, the personal representative is going to have to file certain paperwork with the court. Paperwork such as listing all of your assets at your death, listing all of your debts when you die, helping to notify your creditors of your death and allow them to make a claim against your estate. Once your creditors make claims against your estate, your personal representative will have to work with your creditors in order to pay off those debts that are attributable to your estate, including credit cards, medical bills you would have had. Those are things that your personal representative will have to do for you after your death. The court's also going to ask for other accountings over certain periods of time from the personal representative, and the personal representative is going to have to file the court's scheduling. So you need to make sure you select the right person to be your personal representative after your death to handle and wind up your affairs. But what happens if you don't do a will or any estate plan and you don't select a personal representative? Well, then the court is going to appoint a personal representative for you. And it may not be the person you want to be your personal representative. Let's say you would have wanted your oldest child to be your personal representative. After your death, your kids couldn't agree on who should be the personal representative then the court is going to have to decide who should be appointed in that role. And maybe it's your youngest child, but if you want to be certain who is going to be your personal representative to wind up your affairs after your death, then you're going to want to specify that in your will. What's the second thing a will does? It will distribute your property after your death. So what we find with the majority of married couples is they come into our office and say, I want to give everything to my spouse. I'd say 99 point something percent of married couples have come into us and have said that. But what happens if you die without a will? Does your spouse automatically get everything that's titled in your own name that goes through probate? No. The court sets out a order of priority that says that your surviving spouse will get some money off the top and then the rest will be split between your spouse and your kids, even if you have adult children. So the plan that the government has set aside for you uh, very rarely uh, is the same plan that most people want when they come into our office. In addition, if you're leaving things to kids or other people, you can specify what percentages you want people to have. While most people say split it equally between my children, there are some circumstances where one child should have more money than the other. If that child has special needs, that child doesn't have enough money, or other people who are going to inherit money from your estate have less of a need for money, there may be a different split between the assets. In addition, you have the opportunity in your will to say, should these people who are inheriting your assets get it outright, meaning they get a check for a half or a third or whatever it is that you're giving them out of your estate? Or is there some need to protect that money in a trust or other, other form that protects the money for them and from them? Do you have a child who has a bad credit, who needs to have a trust to protect it from creditors? Do you have a child who's in a bad marriage? Or you're afraid that upon your death, money would go to a son-in-law or daughter-in-law that you don't like? Is your kid about to go through a divorce and you're afraid that your inheritance would get split up in the divorce? Do you have a kid who has special needs? Maybe who's getting government assistance from health benefits or help them to pay their rent or things of that nature. And if you give them a portion of your estate, you could throw them off of their government benefits. Do we need to create a special trust or a special needs trust in order to keep that money safe so your child could continue receiving their government benefits but using your inheritance to help supplement what help the government is giving them. Uh, those are some of the decisions you have to make when we talk about distributing your assets through your will. What's the third thing that a will does? If you have minor children, within your will, you can nominate someone to be the guardian of your minor child. So if you know who you'd want to, to handle your child's affairs upon your death, this is your spot within your will to specify that. Now, Understand that just because you name a particular person or persons as guardian or guardians of your child doesn't mean that person will automatically be appointed a guardian after your death. If someone is going to the court to apply for guardianship over your child, they will certainly look at and give strong weight and consideration to your preferences that you set out in your will, but the court ultimately has the final say of who to appoint as the guardian. To find out more information about estate planning, please visit our website 
at www.chesapeakewillsandtrust.com. Or if you'd like to download a free copy of my book, How to Protect Your Home and Life Savings in Maryland, please visit mdestatebook.com. Now, if you want more information, we told you about the three things that a will does for you. Look on our YouTube page for our next video, The Three Things That a Will Does Not Do. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you on our next video.